Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Give a second for everything to go live. Hi, kitty. If you hear muse and uh, face rubbing, that is Marple. She is uh, awake and needs some attention. So, hey, everyone. Hello. Welcome. This is the first time I've ever tried to do reading sprints. So we'll see how it goes. I've got um, some tea steeping. And uh, hopefully this will just be a lovely little, little hang sesh for us. I think what we'll do is uh, we'll do 25 minute sprints with a five minute break. Um, I'm sitting in my reading chair. You guys can't tell. So the way this works, or at least the way I'm going to do it, is that we will read for 25 minutes, and then we'll um, then we will take a little five minute break and chat about what we're reading, or you know the meaning of life, whatever we want to do. I am doing this in honor of the uh, Roberts Readathon, which is something I'm running right now, uh, which is two weeks where we're trying to read Nora Roberts. So I thought this would be an appropriate little event for that. I'm not sure. So I'm going to read some Nora Roberts. I am either going to start Carolina Moon or I'm going to read Vision in White, which was not on my original TBR, but I'm thinking I need kind of a different type of Nora to break things up a little bit because I just finished sort of like a big chonky standalone, which was the villa. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, spoilers. I thought that was great, but um, I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to jump into like a chonky standalone again because I do think if you read too much of Nora in the same genre she just has such a distinctive vibe and style it can start to get a little samey and then I start to enjoy it less so this is on my TBR but I think I may divert and go to a contemporary state like a, a, the first in a quartet called the Bride Quartet Bridal Quartet and it's called Vision in White and I've heard it's great. It's about like these four women who are in different industries around um, the wedding, different jobs around the wedding industry, I guess. And Nora just writes competency porn so well. Um, I feel like that's one of her gifts is making you feel like, yeah, like I could become a, I don't know, photographer or a search and rescue person or uh, a yoga teacher. Like I could, I could do that. Um, I don't know how she does that, but, uh, I figure, yeah, now that we're talking about that, I think that's probably the move because I think I need some, like a, a filler in between the villa and Carolina moon. Cause I've heard Carolina moon is fantastic. When I mentioned that and the villa on my TBR, a lot of people got excited. So I'm hoping that that will, will be a good one. Yay. I'm glad that you're excited. This is the first sprint I've ever done. So we'll see how it goes. Hey, Jess. Yay. Talk about the meaning of life. Okay. Well, uh, you make the first move. What? How would you like to define um, the state of existence uh, on this on this plane? Um, okay, cool. Yay. Trying to finish the song below water. Yeah, let me know what you guys are going to read. To, oh, I really love Tribute. It, I mean, it's a little older, so it shows its age a little bit, but it's fun. Um, oh, okay. Someone else reading Vision in White. Okay, people saying they love it. Faithless in Death and Legacy. Yay. Uh, can I keep this up? Yeah, I always, I always keep my lives up on my channel unless, like, you know, something goes awry or I don't agree with things that were said after the fact, which I think has only happened once or twice. Some content warnings on Carolina moon. Yeah. I find most of Nora probably needs a content warning. Um, you know, such as life. So hello. 
okay, you think that we're in some sort of a illusion. I mean, I don't know. I guess like Descartes would say that your ability to think belies that. But as we saw in the Matrix, maybe people could manipulate what your perception of or thoughts are. So, um, oh, beach read. Okay, that's a good one. Year one. Yay, Irish thoroughbred. Irish thoroughbred surprised me. I liked it better than I thought I might because it is definitely an early 80s category. Yay. I'm glad you could join. Yes, I tried, as uh, Jess's presence uh, suggests, I tried to put this one at a time that'd be a little bit better uh, for people <clears throat> who are in the European and African time zone. So hope people can catch it. Have to finish people leaving on vacation and then start year one. Awesome. Do with less renovating and more sleuthing. Well, I mean, Nora, she loves a renovation. So I put it on the bingo board because she she loves some home repair. She loves a DIY. She's like a DIY queen, I guess. I don't know. Um, but she has like a lot of Martha Stewart moments. Hot ice. Nice. Arsenic. Very nice. Okay. Oh, yay, Karen Rose. I just finished um, last weekend, the week before, I finished Say Goodbye. I thought it was really good. Ooh, The Witness is good. Yes, okay, I'm glad this works for Europe. Okay, so let me try to share a tab. Um, Hopefully you guys can see. Yes. Okay. You can see that. And like I said, we'll go 25 minutes. And uh, I'm going to put myself on mute so I don't distract you guys. And I'm going to go froth up some milk for my tea and bring it back. So I'm going to start the timer now. Okay.
Okay. First sprint is over. How do we do, guys? Oh, okay. Well, I um, I made myself a little uh, lemon tea latte with some frothed oat milk, and I've got my little hot plate that keeps it warm. And uh, yeah, that's been lovely. And I started um, Vision in White, uh, which is very fun and charming. It is classic Nora. And I'm so excited. So maybe we can talk more about that here in a minute. But okay. Welcome to those who have joined. Uh, let's see here. Going back up. Okay. Yeah. I love that in, in any Nora book. So hello to India. Game of Thrones, fun. I read the first one and was like, you know what? I don't believe he's ever going to finish this, so I'm just going to stop now. <laughs> um, year one, it's interesting. Hey, Izzy. Oh, going to go grab some lunch. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome. This is the first reading sprint I've ever done, so... Happy to join into the drowning deep. Nice. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm glad you could join us. Good morning. Chasing fire. Irish thoroughbred. Yeah, it was not my favorite of Lenora and it definitely shows its age, but I thought it was, especially for her first book, um, it pretty charming, all things considered. Yay. Oh, the cousins of Dwyer. I haven't gotten to that one yet. Um. One Art of Deception, The Liar. That's one of the standalones I still need to get to. Almost 100 pages into Detransition Baby. Had to take a break because the awkward scene was making you cringe. Nice. Hello. Yes, that's a good reason to, to miss the beginning. 20 pages. Nice. I got, it said I got 11% in, so we're doing good. Oh my gosh, Jess, thank you. Yes, um, I forgot. I need to announce that. I'm going to do a giveaway for a Clothbound Classic on Instagram, so I should get on that, but thank you. Uh, yes, totally. Any kind of productivity, love it. Um, hello. Thank you, thank you. 5% further, there you go. Productivity stream, 250 words. Woo, woo. Yes. Uh Welcome. Uh, Poro, do I like the most? And what do I think about the changes? Uh, well, I have a whole video talking about adaptations. If I had to pick one I like the best, I probably would say After the Funeral because it does have um, young Michael Fassbender in it um, in a incestuous love affair, which is fun. <laughs> Uh, Vision and White. Yeah, it is. I just finished the meet cute um, in Vision and White. And it is very cute. It is also very like career competency porn because it's these four women who are childhood best friends. And one of them inherits her parents like, I guess, kind of like old brownstone. And they've turned it into this like very she she wedding venue. And each of them has like a different job at the place. So two and a half down. Nice. Ugh, Last Guard, it is so good. Nice. The Maidens for your book club. I have it. I haven't read it yet, though, so. Pet Cemetery. Ooh, yeah, that one seems like it's pretty brutal. The Hollow, nice. Legacy, yeah, it was a good one. Every, nice, The Liar. 178 pages into Earth, Heaven and Earth. I've not read that one yet. Yeah, I, I thought Vision and White would be a nice little breakup from her kind of cozy suspenses, she writes. Nice. Irish Thoroughbred. Robert's Readathon. So this is a readathon that I'm hosting um, the last two, these last two weeks of July, uh, where just encouraging people to read Nora Roberts. So if you've never read one before, just try reading one and you're participating. If you normally read her, you know, try to 
read some that you haven't uh, read before. And I have a, a bingo board up on my Instagram if people want to use that as a, a guide. Um, so, yeah. There's Thoroughbred. Yeah, it's really quick. It's like 180 pages. It, it's I read it over basically two lunch breaks, so pretty easy to get through. Yeah, I mean, if he were my cousin, I'd have a hard time keeping my hands off, so I really couldn't blame her. Yeah, he seems very... The, the hero in Vision of White seems like he's going to be fun. Uh, there we go. Meaning of life. Why hasn't any intelligent life contacted us yet? I mean... You know, we don't know for sure that they haven't. We may not be able to understand their contact. Um, so who knows? Maybe they've tried and we just can't decipher their signals. Uh, they may have and we can decipher it, but the government's keeping it from us. Also, it's a big old universe. So maybe, you know, we haven't been able to get much outside of our solar system. So maybe there's other life forms out there still trying to get out of theirs. It's just hard to say, you know? Heaven and Earth. I mean, I think if we've learned anything from the movies, if I, I'm going to be pretty sus if we find out somebody's trying to reach us. I've also read enough sci-fi. I don't know. Seems like it could be a... Seems like it could be a dicey proposition. General question about Nora Roberts because of this readathon. First five... Well, Nora, keep in mind that Nora Roberts, let's see, confusion, strength with aggression, is that just my read? Nora Roberts um, has aged much better than most of the writers who came up with her at the same time. But that is that kind of posture of her male characters is very much a function of how romance and like kind of um, genre romance in the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s really thought about male characters. Uh, I will say that Nora Roberts was actually considered to be one of the writers who had less aggressive heroes <laughs> than other contemporaries of hers. Um, and she actually was, I think, instrumental in moving the genre forward in terms of how men were portrayed in romances, but totally agree that to like 2021 20, sensibilities in romance, her heroes are still a little retrograde, but I just kind of roll with it um, because I guess I just know, I guess I just think of it in the context of kind of her time and when she kind of grew up as a writer. Um, and I think especially her newer ones don't have that nearly as much. So dude, it's totally fine though. If people are not into it, cause it's fair enough. Finish the search. Nice. Welcome. Ooh, Song of Achilles. That's a good one. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I've got to keep going with year one. I mean, exactly. If you were Intelligent Life, would you contact us? Come on. She does use a lot of uh, Shakespeare references. She also loves an epigraph. She has lots of quotes in her books. So, um, nice. Yeah, that's true. She definitely has matured a lot over the years. I have never seen any of the Nora Roberts adaptations. I need to try to get my hands on some of those. Yeah, tribute the heroes a lot more chill. I've heard that too about Vision and White, that the hero is a lot more chill. Um, okay, I think uh, I was going to go five minutes. I think it's been more than five minutes. So let's get another 25 minutes up on the clock. I'm going to keep drink drinking some of this. Admire, this is a Starbucks mug that I bought with my excess uh, dining money my freshman year of university, and I still have this set. <laughs> so they have served me well. Um, okay, so let's let's share my screen again. Okay, and let's. Read.
Okay, sprint is over. Sorry, I was getting I was getting in the groove here. Um yeah, I'm about a quarter of the way through and this is adorable for people who are like looking for a a beta hero in a Nora Roberts Vision in White, I think so far at least definitely fits that bill. Um it's just super lovely and cute. Very easy breezy. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Yes, always no time to, like the present to reread. I may reread The Obsession. That might be part of my readathon plans. Yeah, I'm actually, I think me and my best friend at some point are going to go there in the fall. Um. <laughs> nice. Uh, how oh, I I liked year one pretty well. I finished that last week. Um, it's definitely my favorite Paranora I've read, but I wouldn't say it's like. I just don't think that for me at least her, that's not her strength. The speculative books but i appreciate them for what they are i think it'll be an interesting live show because i'm betting that i liked it best out of uh the four of us who who are in the book club so we'll see how that goes um nice yeah i've never seen any of these adaptations but we'll see how it goes oh good luck on the job interview Nice. Hello. Stopping early sexy times are about to start and a sprint ending in the middle of those is always annoying. I agree. I agree. Um, I did get another bingo though, because I think we can officially say that the heroine uh, of Vision and White has a toxic mom. So that was exciting. That's a new bingo blank for me and that got me my third bingo on the card so nice uh nope we're still going coffee is a priority oh thank you i try to have positive vibes only nice nope you guys we're gonna do at least one more sprint Yes, he's definitely far more on the cinnamon roll hero end of things than I'm used to for Nora. So I'm I'm into that. The girl with the dragon, yeah, yeah. Girl with the dragon tattoo is pretty much the opposite in terms of the vibes. Um. So. Yes, he's very he's a sweetie. Yeah, Nora owns a town. She has a town in Maryland called. I know that the book series she wrote about was called the Innsbro uh, series, but there's, she owns this like hotel that's supposed to be super fun to stay at. So um, yeah, I want to go there in the fall. So. Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, here we go. The Boonesboro trilogy. There you go. Uh, Weathering Heights, Oliver Twist, or The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I would pick Sherlock Holmes between those three. Yeah, she is just so good at the competency porn. Um, got another photographer in the one that I'm reading. Just started such a fun age. Oh, great. I've heard that one's really, really good. Ah, oh, Pride and Prejudice, lovely. Yes, you are welcome. Dante's Inferno and moving on to finish Wuthering Heights. Man, look at you. Some heavy hitters there. Oh my gosh. She does found family so well. That's in this book as well. I can I can tell. And yeah, the in-death one definitely has that. Hideaway. Yeah, Hideaway... I didn't feel like was one of her stronger ones, but for people who don't like her romances as much, it could be a good one. Um, 
So I don't know. It just depends on what you go for. But I'm definitely into, uh, I'm definitely into the, I, it's been a while since I've read just a straight up contemporary romance from her. So. Finished year one this morning. Take a swing at the obsession. Oh, I hope you enjoy it. I obviously love the obsession. Just heartbreakingly DNF'd it. But, you know, not everybody can like everything. Whatever. I get it. Yeah, found family is very much a, a Nora theme. So. No clue what Nora Robert writes. Cheap. Um, I don't think that's really what she writes. I would describe her books as very cozy. They're like cozy suspense or cozy, cozy romantic suspense, cozy standalone thriller, cozy contemporary romance, cozy paranormal romance. Like there's usually a romantic element some somewhere in there. Um, or like the villa, I just read that. I ended up defining that as general fiction because yes, there was a romantic element and there was a mystery plot engine, but it didn't really read like that. It read more like an intergenerational family drama. So it's kind of hard to explain her books. I mean, she also has police procedurals under her JD Robb pen name. Um, there's just, yeah, she just has, I mean, she's written so many books and they just have their own vibe, man. Like, they are a very specific flavor. And obviously not everybody's going to like that flavor, but yeah. Anyway. Let's see here. Your first ever Nora. Oh, my gosh. The next always first of the Boonsboro ones and loved it. Oh, that's so great. I haven't read that series yet, but I've heard it's it's lovely. Yeah, I really enjoyed the villa. It's okay, Jess. You don't have to like the obsession. I won't hold it against you. I, I won't, uh, you know, rate Amari and the Night Brothers low in retribution or anything. So don't worry. Uh, is Nora Roberts a pen name? It is a pen name, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, she is definitely commercial fiction. There's no way around that. But um it's just like, it's kind of hard. I don't know. It, there's not a lot of read-alike titles for her. Like, I can't think of really many. Um, like, there's not a lot of authors, I think, of who are doing something exactly like what she does. Yeah, Cotton Candy. Can't have it all the time, but when I do, I love it. Yeah, I think you if you read too much of the same kind of book from her in a row, I think it gets tricky because it is such a specific flavor that you're like, okay, gosh, I've seen this before. Um but yeah, I agree. I think her character work is really what tends to shine. Um, nope, that's totally fine. It's not for everyone. The Robert genre, yeah. Uh, thoughts on Middlemarch? I love Middlemarch. It's, it's a great classic, a very subversive in a lot of ways, um, especially for sort of a country novel. So... Um, I have a video called where to start with Nora Roberts. So that's where my thoughts are, but she's got, I, I don't love her paranormal ones. So I don't recommend people start there. I know there are people who love those paranormal ones. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's plenty of places to start. So find a, a description that sounds good to you and kind of go from there. Okay, I think it's been five minutes-ish. So we'll start. Yeah, I mean, Nora Roberts, it never really gets all that serious. There's a lot of, especially, again, she kind of came from the early -er days of genre romance. So she definitely needs a lot of content warnings generally for her books because, like, people like you know there's a lot of casual assault or casual murder <laughs> that happens in some of her books so be forewarned there but i don't i don't think that they could be really meaningfully considered um i uh, dark romance 
So, okay. Um, I updated my bingo board. So let me share another sprint. We'll do at least one more. I'll see how I'm feeling at the end of this. I'm going to have to do some wound care eventually. Um, so we'll see how things are going after this sprint, but we'll do at least one more. So grab your book and we'll get going.
Okay. Time's up. <sighs> I'm at about 40% in. And it's very charming. This is by far and away the like most low-key hero I've ever read from Anora Roberts. And I'm really into him. He's very, very adorable. Um, he's like a, a sweet little geeky English professor in tweeds who's had a crush on the heroine for a very long time. They were like in high school together and he had a crush on her. And uh, yeah, it's just real, real cute. I'm into it. Shocking. I know it's shocking to hear that I'm into Anora Roberts. You would never have thought of it, but it's true. And actually, I have one, two, three, four, five ways I could get bingo right now. Um, so that's exciting. Um, okay. Let's see here. Trying to scroll back up. If you want a fun ghost story, Midnight Bayou is good. I'll get there eventually. I'm going to read them all. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it definitely, those elements pop up um, with some frequency. So, if that's not your deal, I think that is fair enough. I think Nora Roberts handles tough subjects, content warning issues with grace, and I would describe as a certain dignity. Mm, I think she can. I think that it's not consistent, though. I would say her earlier books, I think, are less that way. Um, like, for instance, An Irish Thoroughbred. Oh, did I put this in my review? I probably need to, but I didn't. Um, there is an attempted assault, and uh, it just kind of comes and goes. I mean, that was her first book ever, but I... You know, I wouldn't say that she's like an offender in that area, but I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say she's consistently uh, super how to say this. I think sometimes um, violence in genre fiction is very much a plot device, which is fine. But I think that comes with a certain level of like kind of not dealing with all the ramifications of the heavy element that's being introduced. And I think she can. um she definitely can fall that way in some of her books. But for instance, in the JD Robb books, I think she handles like very dark subject matter, usually with a pretty good level of sensitivity. So it's just a little bit of a mixed bag, I think. Uh, yes, the Bride Quartet and the Born in Trilogy don't have dark content. So far, of what I've read of the Bride Quartet, it's very easy breezy. So Lucinda Riley as comparable. Interesting. If you Google authors like Nora Roberts, you get some extremely diverse results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. Sandra Brown's Romantic Suspense. I tried reading one of those and DNF'd it, but I should try again because I've heard that as well. Oh, yay. I think you were reading The Obsession. I hope you're enjoying it. Yay! Oh, yeah. The obsession starts with a bang. <laughs> it gets straight into it. So, oh man, 24 hour readathon. Whew. Vision in white. Yeah, it is just really cute and light. It's just, it's fun and adorable and just very charming. So, yeah. Five chapters down. Nice. Hello. Yeah. Yay, I hope you enjoy. <sighs> well, folks, I need to do, I think, some wound care. So I think that will be my last sprint. But this is fun. I've never done reading sprints before. Um, yeah, it's nice to just sort of dip in and out. I feel like I was pretty productive. I got 40% through a book. So it's not very, uh, it's not very difficult to get through this particular one. 
Does Nora Roberts all also have books without romance? She definitely comes from the world of romance. So she tends to have that as an element, even if it's not a romance per se. I, I think of books like, for instance, um, Shelter in Place, undercurrents and blue smoke is not being nearly as romance forward. So it's a part of the book, but it's not as prominently a part of the book. So those might be some examples of ones you could try if you, if you don't necessarily want a lot of romance. Um, Yeah, the friendships in this series so far seem really sweet. And Carter is just, like, freaking adorable. He is so sweet. Um, yeah. Yes, my pleasure. I'm glad you guys could join. I know. Time flies. Time flies. In general, the like, 25 minutes sprinting of anything is a good, like if you have a chore you're dreading doing, setting the clock for 20 or 25 minutes and then taking a five minute break is a good way to make it go a lot faster. So, well, guys, I appreciate you guys joining. Hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend. And uh, I'm going to do some wound care and then I'm going to keep... Um, I'm going to keep going and I think I'll polish off this this afternoon. It's a very quick read. So um, I'm glad you guys could join. Thank you and have a lovely day. Bye.